Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. I have dozens of bonus videos posted that will help you in these areas and also will help you develop stronger coping skills. In each of the program notes, there's a link where you can request a free digital book, Understanding Your Dreams, where you can find my other media, and also where you can find my books on Amazon. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Now here's today's episode. Dr. Jennifer Moore hosts the Lennox James podcast, and I was a guest on her program where I answered questions about how a person can build a greater sense of peace and improve their coping skills, even if they came out of a dysfunctional family or experienced trauma in their background. So we cover the gamut of topics. So I hope you'll find these tips and strategies useful. And if so, leave me a comment. Now here's this week's episode, How to Increase Your Peace and Coping Skills. So Today my special guest is Dr. Tony Cooper. She is a psychologist, author, and public speaker. She earned her doctorate in clinical psychology from the Illinois School of Professional Psychology in 1996. Her specialties include the treatment of anxiety, depression, dysfunctional family patterns, and PTSD. Tony has a special interest in helping individuals identify relevant psychological strategies for coping as they learn to develop a deeper connection to God. Her books, Podcasts, seminars, and videos reflect our need for Jesus Christ in order to be fully alive. Referencing Colossians 2 and 10. Dr. Cooper, thank you for agreeing to come on today. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for um, accommodating me uh, with the time change, too. I appreciate that. No problem. All right. So uh, we're going to jump straight into some questions here. So um, what inspires you to focus on anxiety, depression, and adult survivors of dysfunctional families in your podcast? Well, I've been practicing for quite a long time, Mm -hmm. and I noticed that over and over what people were coming in for help with was anxiety, depression, dysfunctional families, Mm -hmm. trauma, and relationship concerns. So since I ended up working in those areas year after year after year, mm-hmm. I thought, well, I know something about this. So that would be a good topic for my podcast. Now, why do you believe these topics are important and relevant for discussion in the context of mental health? Well, these are almost like the, um, you know, like common cold of mental health anymore, mm-hmm. anxiety, depression. I don't know too many people that came out of healthy, functional families. So that's almost everybody now. So the Mm -hmm. things that I've been working on with people, helping them with their coping skills, it seems like just about anybody can benefit from these now in this day and age. The next question, what is learned helplessness and how is this concept useful for people to understand? Well, early in my career, I became aware of a phenomenon called learned helplessness. It isn't a diagnosis, but it is sort of a, you could say, condition. So it's easiest to explain if I give an example. So uh, maybe you know that the way that they train baby elephants for the circus is that they tie a rope around their leg when they're little and it's tied to a tree or a pole or something that isn't going to move. And so every time they try to move, every time they try to assert their will, they're pulled back over and over 
So eventually they learn there's no use trying. So when they get to adulthood, they can keep a gigantic, powerful adult elephant in one place, just with the rope around the leg. It doesn't have to be tied Mm. to anything. So it's not hard to figure out how this applies to human beings. If there are too many events that occurred too close together or too early in life, what happens is it it becomes discouraging, Mm -hmm. almost like helpless. Why should I try? What good does it do? That in spite of whatever Mm -hmm. spiritual beliefs I have, I might believe, well, this works for everybody except me. And so it might not even be put into words, but it's just this chronic low grade kind of attitude or expectation that can spill over into lots of parts of life. And then people stay stuck in a job, stuck in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Don't take advantage of Mm -hmm. medical care. There's lots of different Mm -hmm. ways that this can show up. And so I, I noticed with many people, especially that had trauma early in life mm-hmm. or were in the military, that enough things happened where they felt helpless, mm-hmm. that even when the situations change, they can't seem to regroup. So now I kind of want to go into some self-help strategies. What are some daily strategies for managing depression and anxiety? Okay. So the the suggestions I'm going to give really kind of work for anything. So the the way that we're designed, we're body, soul, and spirit. Mm -hmm. So there are strategies for the body, strategies for the soul, strategies for the spirit. Mm -hmm. So I'll start with the body. We need enough sleep. We want to watch out how much caffeine we have. We Mm -hmm. want to make sure we get exercise. We want to try to be at a healthy weight. And Mm -hmm. we want to be very careful of the substances that we have, because all of those affect how our brain works. Mm -hmm. And that's going to affect our moods. That's going to affect our coping. So the spiritual strategies we can talk about in a few minutes. So my expertise, of course, are the strategies for the soul. Mm -hmm. So, um, so a, a lot of what I help people look at is, of course, we need social supports. Mm-hmm. We need people that celebrate us. Mm-hmm. A lot of what I focus on, though, is how does a person talk to themselves? A lot of us say things to ourselves we would never say to a friend. We would never say to a child. And if we're talking mm-hmm. some kind of smack to ourselves much of the day, then we are going to undermine our own progress, Mm -hmm. our own growth. And many people barely notice that they're doing it. And so part of how I help people become aware of it, if they're not working directly with me, is I encourage them to start writing down your negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. There's probably a few that come up over and over. So start writing them down. And I encourage them to use a journal. Lots of people have, Mm -hmm. you know, journal strategies. So on one side of the paper, you write that negative thought. I'm stupid. I don't know what I'm doing. I can't handle this. Write the negative thought. And then the (laughs) challenge is on the other side of the paper, next to the negative thought, write a coaching statement. If a friend was having this problem and they said, I can't take it. You wouldn't say, you're right, give up. Right. You would say to a friend, you can do this one step at a time. So we need to start talking to ourselves, write down these coaching statements and start to talk to ourselves the way we would talk to a friend, the way we would talk to a child. We don't lie to them, but we're positive, we're Mm -hmm. supportive. Mm -hmm. And with that positive Mm -hmm. shift, we're building a new train track in the brain And then we are beginning to help ourselves progress instead of fight ourselves. Okay. Thank you um, for those wise words. Um, Just sharing your insights, excuse me, on the importance of self-help strategies um, as it relates to Christian counseling. So I'm hoping that the viewers who watch this replay later remember that faith and self-help, they do go hand in hand um, when you're on your path of of trying to grow and, and heal. 
Exactly. The Bible teaches us to take every thought captive. So what does that mean? It means pay attention to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, if you're not focusing on the things that are true, that are lovely, that are honorable, things that match what God says about us, Mm -hmm. then it needs to take a little shift. I absolutely agree. I oftentimes I find myself reaffirming myself with scriptures, which is why I try to make sure I, I guess you could call it like a spiritual toolkit that I make sure that I keep scriptures in for when I may be having a tough moment, I have something to, to pull from. So it's very important for me to have that, that structure just to reaffirm myself. Absolutely. So many people use some kind of daily meditation, Mm -hmm. daily inspirational reading, because most of us, by the end of the day, we might be worn down a little. So (laughs) when the next day starts, we want to get our minds in a positive place. And sometimes we have to borrow some faith from the Lord. We -hmm. can't do it all ourselves. We can borrow it from a friend. We can borrow it from an inspirational scripture. And then we start renewing our minds again that day so that we have the Mm -hmm. wisdom and the positive expectations that, okay, I'm going to handle whatever happens. I'm not doing this by myself. Mm -hmm. The Lord is with me. I have people who love me and, you know, go from that attitude as opposed to start off defeated, discouraged, and hopeless. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we, and you're absolutely right. We have to renew our minds daily, every day. Daily. Gotcha. Okay. So my next question I wanted to ask you, Um, In what ways can faith and spirituality be resources for individuals navigating anxiety and depression? So as we just talked about, when when there is a gap between what you say you believe about God Mm -hmm. and what your personal experience is, there's some kind of a distortion operating. Mm -hmm. So if I believe that God is love, but I hate myself, Okay, there's something, there's a disconnect there. Mm -hmm. So we need to look for where did this start? Babies aren't born hating themselves. So maybe we were rejected. Maybe we were bullied. Maybe we went through some form of abuse. So we want to start to use our faith to address the issues of the soul that Mm -hmm. we, we all have those areas that are a little bit broken a little Mm -hmm. bit weak. And so we want to access our faith to help us address those, not run from them. Mm -hmm. Because when we deny there's anything wrong with us, well, that's not possible. We all have things wrong with us. And so we want to access our faith, our belief in God's love, our belief in God's power, Mm -hmm. our belief in God's goodness to apply it to the places It says in Psalm 23, he restores my soul. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? It means the places in my soul that are broken, that are hurt, that are lonely, that we can invite God's help. And there are practical Mm -hmm. strategies we need to do, but we can invite God's help and, and, and believe, thank you, Lord, you are restoring my soul Mm -hmm. and you're going to give me the strategies to see that happen. Absolutely. And again, thank you, because your insight is is very profound as it connects. There's a connection between faith and mental health. So I know for me personally, when I was going through some things, faith was a big source of strength and healing for me. That was something that I heavily relied on. Yeah, absolutely. We all go through things. Just mm-hmm. Having faith in God doesn't protect you from suffering. You can do everything right and something bad can happen that you don't Mm -hmm. deserve. But our, that's when our faith, that's when we need it the most Mm -hmm. because that's when we have to, to draw closer to God, let him walk with us through whatever is happening. So my next question, um, are there specific biblical teachings or stories that can offer guidance on releasing guilt? and embracing forgiveness. So let's start with the guilt. That is a really common one for people, especially if there was something very difficult in their background. Mm. So the the passage that the Lord used 
with me when I was first learning about how not to just go into despair when I failed at something or when I failed myself Mm -hmm. is in the book of first John, the very first chapter, it talks about the light. It talks about the dark. And it says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and righteous Mm -hmm. to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That forgiveness doesn't come because we're good. It comes because God paid, Jesus paid for our sin. Mm -hmm. So I use sort of an example for people that have trouble with this. Because many people, again, know that the Bible teaches forgiveness, Mm -hmm. but they get stuck. Their emotional experiences, but I still feel condemned. So it's coming from us. It's not coming from God. So another example I use with people is when I go to the store and I'm checking out, Mm -hmm. you know, whether it's I'm getting a coffee or I'm getting, you know, a little gift or uh, some groceries, I go through the checkout line one time. I don't keep getting in the line over and over and over to pay for whatever is on that conveyor belt. Mm -hmm. Well, if Jesus already paid for our sin, Mm -hmm. there is no value for us to criticize ourselves, condemn ourselves, you know, stay in a place of guilt and shame. There, there is no value in that. It's We can't pay for it. None of us can. Right. So we need to be reminded, this is paid for. Ask the Lord for wisdom. Ask the mm-hmm. Lord for a strategy of how to do a little better. Mm-hmm. But we don't earn our forgiveness, just like we don't earn salvation. That That's good. I, I have, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> often found in my recovery, <clears throat> excuse me, coaching, that I'm encouraging others to embrace the reality of God's boundless grace. Because I, I truly feel that there's no mistake too great for his forgiveness. Yeah. And the heart is beyond redemption. So I, I find myself, I encourage people to trust in the process, seek guidance and wisdom, like you just said, and remember that that forgiveness is is a gift that we both receive and we extend it to others. So yeah, Absolutely. I, I do. I, I just encourage yeah. people to to find peace and healing through God's transformation because he really can change us because he's just that compassionate and he cares about us. Yeah. If we could do it for ourselves, Jesus wouldn't have needed mm-hmm. to die on the cross. That's it. Absolutely. But we can't but we can't. And so again, for people who have trouble with receiving the forgiveness, if they had a parent, an authority figure, even an older sibling that would just torment them, would not forgive them, Mm -hmm. held everything over their head, teacher, then they have internalized and expect that if I do something wrong, something horrible is going to happen and I'm never going to live it down. Mm -hmm. God, God is not like those individuals. He's Mm -hmm. different. And so sometimes we have to realize, oh, I'm blaming God for this person. And God had nothing Mm -hmm. to do with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my next question, and we've kind of talked about this a little bit. um, How can Christians integrate their faith into practical strategies for managing anxiety and depression on a day-to-day basis? So um, as we've talked about, having that daily time Mm -hmm. where you pray and read the Bible Mm -hmm. and release, confess your own sin, choose to forgive other people. If we're carrying resentments, we're going to have a hard time feeling peace or joy. Mm -hmm. We're going to be kind of tormented ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so I tell people, if you're waiting for the feelings to forgive, they're not coming. (laughs) No. It's a choice. And so we want to mine, you know, the treasures of God's word for ourselves each day. We want to pray. Pray is talking to God. It it doesn't have to be fancy. Mm -hmm. And then we want to listen. So we can listen by reading his word and Mm -hmm. ask him to teach us. Mm -hmm. We can be still. And sometimes Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. Uh He says that in John chapter 10. Sometimes we'll just get kind of a, a little idea that was like, that that's a that's a good idea. That is that's too good for me to have thought of that. It mm-hmm. had to be God. 
And so he wants to give us insights. He wants to give mm-hmm. us strategies, creative ideas, sometimes even ways to make money that will yeah. help us solve our problems, mm-hmm. that will give us joy. And then mm-hmm. we can carry that light into our world, into our families, into where we work. And so all of these things, uh, faith is an interaction. It's not just intellectual. It's a relationship where we receive, we worship, and we receive peace. We receive power. We, we learn what God says about things so we can stay out of some of the potholes. And it helps us begin to, the Lord designed us body, soul, and spirit. So we don't mm-hmm. want to just be controlled by our bodies. Mm -hmm. We don't want to just live in our brain. We want to be fully alive, body, soul, and spirit. And so all of those dimensions that God created us to have, those all work in harmony when the spiritual comes first. Mm -hmm. Something that I have found helpful when I was dealing with some things with anxiety, my closet is, is pretty big. I mean, I could probably make a small little pallet and lay down in there. (laughs) So I would get my um, Bluetooth speaker and I would just have like some praise and worship music and I would just sit there and just listen. That was a way for me to manage my, my symptoms. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's been very impactful. It's just people will really be amazed at the small things that you can do on a daily basis to help you in with manage your symptoms through biblical practice. Absolutely. Yes. And there's so many like instrumental YouTube channels of mm-hmm. praise music, worship music. Yes. And so I do that myself. Sometimes mm-hmm. I just sit in a chair because we all tend to be too busy. I just yep. sit in a chair and invite <clears throat> God's presence. Mm-hmm. And I have a few favorites and I just, you know, let, let it wash over me, thank the Mm -hmm. Lord for his presence. Mm -hmm. And then that is the most peaceful I am all day long are those few minutes where I spend in God's presence. Mm -hmm. And then I, I can carry that with me. And as you get used to doing that, maybe the first few times you don't notice any difference, Mm -hmm. but we have to really kind of train ourselves to be still because we're all running around all the time. Mm -hmm. We have to learn to be in control of the pace of our life. That's Mm -hmm. a boundary. We control our time. We control what commitments we make. Mm -hmm. We control how busy we're going to be. So that's a boundary. Absolutely. You have to set those perimeters around because if not, you're going to be overwhelmed, stressed. For me, if I ever get a little bit off task and I haven't read my daily devotionals like I typically would, or I haven't just sat in my closet, I notice there's a, a change in my my mental health. So I just made it just a practice every day just to be still. There Sometimes you go. I go in my closet and I just listen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just let yeah. him down, pull whatever yeah. it is he wants to say to me. That's powerful. Very. And as women, I, I know men can be this way too, but as women... Women oftentimes let other people dictate what they're going to do, where they're going to be, what they're going to take care of, what they're Mm going to help with. And a lot of times women are not good at saying no. You can say no in a nice way. Like, I am so sorry. I can't help you. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You have to, you have to learn. It's like, if, if I run myself ragged, Mm -hmm. I won't have, I won't be at peace. Mm -hmm. I won't be very helpful. Pretty soon I'm going to be irritable and resent resentful. Yep. So we need, that's a boundary. We got to take care of ourselves. And sometimes we need to let somebody else figure out how to take care of them. That's it. Absolutely. All right. So my um, last question, what advice do you have for those considering counseling with a Christian context? I would say, um, <clears throat> If you know what it is that you want to work on, what you want help with, Mm -hmm. we can't all be good at everything. So you want to pick somebody that what they're good at is what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Um, 
to some degree, you want to pick someone who specializes, who's licensed, Mm -hmm. who knows your area. They might be a very nice person. They might be a very good Christian. But if they don't know much about your concern, Mm -hmm. maybe that's not the right person. So you want to be uh, discriminating about this person, their expertise, their experience. It's what it is the area that I have trouble with. So, excuse me. So I'm looking at your book. And so your latest book, Anxiety, Depression and Helplessness, Keys to Break Free addresses the practical skills we need for coping. So would you mind telling um, our the viewers who will be watching later um, where they can purchase your book? I don't know if it's on your, your website. So if you can just give a little information about that. Well, sure. Um, <clears throat> on my website, you can find links to all my books, to okay. my podcast, to my YouTube channel. Everything's on my website, okay. drtonycooper.com. Or you can go straight to Amazon and type in Dr. Tony Cooper or the name of the book. Right. Because I think, I believe I saw where you, oh yeah, you had um, some free resources too that helps I kind of teach some coping skills as well. So yeah, my okay. YouTube channel is very focused on practical coping skills. I send my clients there in between sessions mm-hmm. so that they, so that they get practice in what I'm teaching them. Mm-hmm. My podcast mm-hmm. is more on integrating spiritual life with uh, the challenges, you know, stress, things like that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I have a free ebook called Understanding Your Dreams, because a lot of times God may speak to us through a dream. Other times Mm -hmm. a dream will help us understand why we're stuck. And so I give some keys of how to unlock the symbols in dreams. And then I have some devotional books I've written. So I've, so some of the resources I've developed over the years you have to purchase, but there's lots of things that are free. Okay. All right. I want to do a follow-up at some point in time because I'm going to order the book too. So I want to read it. Okay. I guess maybe we can have like a a book club. (laughs) Thank you. That'd be great. Yeah. All right. Well, it was nice meeting you. And again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And I hope you feel better soon. Thank you so much. You take care.